Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Saturday. No, yes. <laughs> Saturday, November 28th, 2015. Ah, I just finished a novel about less than an hour ago. Came in at like 53,800 and 82 words, something close to that. So I'm done. I am completely done. Two days early, so that's cool. It's cold. It's like 36 degrees out here. It's cold in the house. We're at like 62-ish. The furnace died overnight at my in-law's place. So we're awaiting we're waiting for the furnace repair guy to show up and hopefully fix the furnace. But yeah, it's getting cold. What makes it worse is that he had one K cup of coffee, which I used already. <laughs> so we can't even really make much in the way of hot drinks. And I totally forgot to bring, I meant to bring my own supply, but I forgot. But what I thought I'd talk about today is Scrivener. You know, I, I, I downloaded the NaNoWriMo trial copy of Scrivener and decided, you know, I'm going to try this thing out. It's, you know, they had a free trial. It was kind of geared toward NaNoWriMo. You know, what the hell? You know, it's, 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 it was free to try. You know, it's always been the 800 pound gorilla when people talk about noveling software. And if I won, and I won, you get it for half price, which is like 20 bucks. So, uh, so yeah, I've been using that. You know, the, the NaNoWriMo um, trial, it's got some templates on it. So like there's, there's, there's a basic template for a NaNoWriMo text file. And it's got a, you, within any, any kind of a text file, you can specify a target. So these obviously have a target of 1667 on them. So if you wanted to like create a file per day, you could very easily track if you're hitting your target because right there at the bottom, it shows you what your target is. So the basic structure of Scrivener is kind of nice. You got a pane, and I, you can probably move these around. I've not done so. You've got a pane on the left that is showing you your structure of your novel. So you can you can put things in folders. You, you basically have a collection of text, fi text files, but you can put those in folders, and you can put folders within folders. So like for my novel, I have split up there's basically eight, uh, make that nine sections. So I've got seven movements of the symphony of death. There is an intermission because I needed to have some action in the middle where there were no killings. So basically each movement is killing, is a set of killings. And then I have the encore, which is an epilogue. That's what I wrote this morning. And so the way I was able to structure this is I have a folder for each of those sections. And then within that, I have folders, multiple folders that are going to be chapters is how I'm envisioning it. And then within each chapter folder is going to be is one or more text files. Typically, there's more than one in what I did, because I just, for each scene, I did a new text file. And then in the middle portion, you've got your your white space, that's your, your page. So, and it depends on what you click on in the left, because if you, if you click on a folder, you get what's called the corkboard view, which is kind of nice. You get, you get, it looks like, you know, they, they got a cork background, and you got what looks like a, a index card and so it will have the name of 
So like if I, if I click on a, uh, given the structure that it's outlined, if I click on one of my movements, I will see there an index card for each of my chapter folders there. And I can see the name, and if I get put any kind of description text on the chapter folder, because there's, there's a pane you can open up to the right, where you can specify the name, and you can also, if you want to put like a brief synopsis or some space to do that, th that'll show up on the corkboard view. And then if I click on one of those, on one of those, uh, those note cards, that'll that'll drill me down a, a level. So that would drill me down into that particular folder and then I would see uh, instead of seeing the previous set of note cards now I would see a note card for every uh, text file that was within that folder assuming all there was those text files I mean I, I don't think there's a limit to how much nesting you could do with the folders other than just sanity but um, so it's nice because you can rearrange them there. Uh, if, if you want to rearrange your story, it's an easy way to re rearrange them. And then when you've clicked on a text file from the left pane, that center space, then that's, that's your writing pane. Uh, you can go to a full page, uh, full screen mode, which will basically blank out the entire rest of the screen including your taskbar and leave you only with that center section to write in so if you really wanted to eliminate distractions you could go to full screen mode and write that way i didn't do it but i know it's there so so yeah i mean so and, and is you can you can specify a default setup there, so I, I, I really want it to be you know, kind of your typical manuscript format. The font it's being used, I think, is like Courier or Times New Roman, maybe, which is fine, but it was single spaced, that was, was their default. And so I was double spacing them, the paragraphs manually. Every time I open a new text file, I was double spacing them. And finally, about, I don't know, a third to a halfway through, I'm like, you know, this is stupid. There's got to be a default. And there was, and it wasn't hard to find. It was in the options where I could specify the default text format, and I changed that to be double spaced. And and then from that point forward, it was automatically double spaced. I didn't have to do anything special. The one thing that struck me as a little strange was, you know, as I would change things to be double spaced, it would say, "Do you want to apply default indenting?" And I was like, yes, yes, I would. Because at the beginning, when I did that, it would give me the, I forget what you called it, I think it's called the first line, where the first line is indented a half an inch and the rest of them are not, which is what I prefer. I think that's what the standard is for double spaced. But then it got to the point where it wasn't doing that. It was like removing, that indent was already there and it was removing it. And I found that really annoying. And there didn't seem to be any kind of control that I could find to directly specify what the indent option was that I wanted. I finally discovered that if I turned on the ruler, which was not by default turned on, then I could adjust the indent through the use of little controls on the ruler that look very much like Word. Uh, and and then from that point forward, when it asked me if I wanted to change my indents, I just said no. And then once I figured out how to change the default to be double spaced, there wasn't that much of a concern. So yeah, if you if you wanna if you wanna take charge of your indents, then turn on the ruler is one thing I learned. And then, you know, that was something. Yeah, I didn't have a ton of time to really learn ahead of time on this. So some of these things that I just kind of found out through using, through using it. And I had posted it on the Roundtable Facebook group when I decided to do this. And I decided to use Scrivener like, you know, five days or something before, before the uh, nano started. 
So I watched some of the basic videos and I played around with it a little bit. But I did a lot of learning as I used it, which is fine. I'm cool learning like that. If there was actually somebody on somebody on Nano on uh, the roundtable site that said he would never try to learn a new piece of software. Hello, doggies. Hello, doggies. Goodbye, doggies. I got a couple big dogs that are coming up to say hi. You know, they, he said he would never use, you know, use a new piece of software during NanoRIMO. It's just too much. And and yeah, I was just say, all right, that's fine. You know, I you know, I don't really learn by that point how to build a text file, how to you know add a text file. I figure worse comes worse. I know how to add a text file. I can type into a text file. I'm okay. <laughs> worse comes worse. I can just you know, even if it's looking how I want it to look. I can I can manage and it really wasn't a problem using it. I mean there's still a lot of features that I, I need to to learn about, but they're not features I needed for this month. Um, I relied on the name generator a lot. Although uh, I have to say that I, I found it to be less than useful if I wanted somebody to be Caucasian and, and have some sort of a Caucasian name uh, or just you know, what I would consider kind of a normal, you know, normal Caucasian name, you know, Tom, Harry, Dick, Richard, whatever. It wouldn't give you, if I did American, I got this weird hodgepodge of, of names that, that frankly are either re really way out there or sound, you know, very African American, you know, Javon and Yvonne and, you know, those. And that's fine. I mean, but, it, but the thing was, they, they also had an African American language setting on the steam generator. So steam generator you can say whether you want male and female or both. I mean you can specify you want the first thing to be American, you want the last thing to be Chinese, or you can pick any combination, or you can say just anything. You can specify the first letter if you have like I had a I had a uh, character whose name's first name was uh, Terry. And in my epilogue, I was bringing up her sister. And I wanted her, her first thing to also start with a T. And so I was able to do a search for that. So it was, it was quite useful, especially with ethnic names, um, of which I had a fair number in this. So, so uh, yeah, that is a useful feature. I do wish that they could give you a keystroke. Uh, they they have a lot of things that you can you have keyboard equivalents for to, to bring up, and there's a screen where you can you can modify a lot of those if you want. Uh, but the area that's like the writing tools, there didn't seem to be a way to do that, just with a cursory glance. And the writing tools is where they have a number of options including bringing up the name generator and then dealing with other resources. One of the things that you can do is you can select a word and go to writing tools and you can bring up thesaurus.com and it'll open up a web page with, with thesaurus.com for that particular word. And you know, I've used that website in the past but I guess I've really come to rely on words thesaurus functionality, which has gotten better. It's actually not bad. And you know, I I had a hard time with 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 thesaurus.com. I can't see that word now. 
said it too many times. I had a hard time with it, getting something I w that I was really looking for. I, I, I don't know what the deal was with that. It didn't, that didn't quite work out how I wanted it to. I would like to have been able to assign a keystroke to that. For instance, Shift F7, which would mimic you know what, what Windows is. And that's when I'm thinking of thesaurus, I'm always thinking, you know, Shift F7. And uh, that's what Word does. I guess it's Windows. But you couldn't do that. For some reason, nothing in, the, in that writing tools menu, you can't assign a keystroke to it. I'd also like to be able to have a, a quick shortcut that I could assign to the name generator to get that to come up. It's not a big deal to you know invoke it from the menus, but I got to take my my hand off the keyboard to do so. And pretty much any other function you can do with the keyboard shortcut. Some of which are defaulted, and some of which are not. So, so that's a little bit of a uh, you know feature I would like to have in this. Oh goody, the heating guy just passed me. <laughs> Get to work, buddy. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I would really love Scrivener to have, well, it did give you word count um, on whatever, whatever text section you were in. And they have a word count um, screen you can pop up to see your total word count for your project. And there is a keyboard shortcut for that. It's control period. And so that worked out very well in getting my total word count. There was nothing that would show me my word count by day. And, and to me that's where, where kind of the nano template kind of fell off. Because yeah, it would give me it would show me how I was doing it against the target, but in order for it to really be meaningful, I had to do all my typing in that one day's file. And, you know, typically my scenes weren't that long, for the most part. You know, I would, and I would want to break it up into, if it's a different viewpoint, I want to break it up into a different file so that when it's finally compiled into some other format, uh, it would, there would be a, a scene break there. So I would have liked some sort of functionality to show me my words per day. I think Rider had that because I think he wrote that in specifically with, specifically with Nano in mind. Now I don't know if the version I'm using, this Nano trial version, is the latest and greatest. So I'm going to be interested to see, I haven't got my code yet to buy my discounted version of Scrivener. So I don't think I'm supposed to get that until early December. So I'm gonna, I will check and see how that goes and see if maybe they added that back in or, or I put that in since. So if not, I might get on the forum and suggest it because I think that would be nice. I think some sort of functionality to get to your indents and modify your indents, you know, by inches and half inches, kind of, you know, kind of like Word does. You can do it with a ruler in Word, but you can also open up a screen where you can adjust them. Uh, I think that would be nice uh, to be able to do it with a, like a paragraph formatting kind of option would be nice. But there are some some very nice things about it. Uh, the spell checker was was very robust. The only problem I had with that is at one point part way through, it had autocorrect spelling errors. And I'm like, I'm all over that. But then I started noticing that I was getting some really weird replacements that seemed to be including their name database in the possible corrections. Because I would get these weird names that were popping up in, in my text. and. And when a misspelling of station suddenly got created, got transmogrified in the capital S Satan, I decided to turn that back off. But it did, it did, it did correctly, you know, identify my misspelled words, and I could right mouse click 
and correct them. You know, one thing that I wish these software people would do, and this is not unique to, to Scrivener. Uh, I have the same problem with Word. You know, they have a pretty big right mouse click menu. And they always put the spelling errors or spelling suggestions at the top. You know, but if I'm at the bottom of the page, the right mouse click menu goes up. And then I gotta scroll all the way to the top of my mouse to click on the spelling, you know, the desired spelling. It'd be really nice if they would change things so that they put the spelling suggestion closer to your mouse cursor. Uh, and I, I'd like to see that in Word as well as Scrivener. So that was one thing. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it overall. I think it was a nice um, tool. I want to learn more about revisioning. They have the ability from a scene by scene to do a snapshot where you can like save a copy of that scene. And I think you can almost do, I think you can almost do a, you know, snapshot all. But I'm curious if you needed to do like a, a major revision, like I, I listened to an interview with, uh, I think it was Gail Carriger, where she had done, at the behest of her agent, she had done like a major revision on a particular book and she'd torn out like 20,000 words. But then when she sold, when the agent sold it to a, uh, agent sold it to a uh, publisher, they say, oh, this is great, we wanna buy it, but we'd like to see this stuff. And that was in that 20,000 words. So Gail just presented them the, 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 you know, the post, the pre-edit version of, of that manuscript. And they bought that. And you could always manage that by just saving another copy of the file, but I'm curious if there's a better way within within the app. You know, honestly, with YWriter, I use YWriter for um, writing initial edits, and then I would port it over to, to Word. And part of that was so I could use their spelling engine and, and whatnot, and then that's how I'd send it off to the to the wife for editing. I kind of feel like Scrivener is is more of an app where I want to leave the novel there. I'll still have to export it for people to read it and and edit it and stuff. But I'm thinking that as I get corrections, I'm going to want to apply those corrections within Scrivener and keep it in there. Um, the fact that you have your research there, I'll to, maybe I'll talk about that some other time because I know I'm super, super long today. Um, there were some issues in saving PDFs within Scrivener. It has a facility where you can give it a, a URL and it will take that URL and it will save it as a PDF and keep it within Scrivener and then you just click on it and there's your web page saved as a PDF. It's really handy. Uh, some web pages it wasn't able to do that for me. For some reason, it gave some sort of error. I have the, you know, I have a software on my PC where I could basically print the website as a PDF and then store that within the research folder to do the same thing. But I had about a 50% success rate with that tool. It'd be nice, obviously, if that worked worked more. But I like the software, and I think it's something I'm definitely going to be using going forward. I'm definitely going to use my Nano discount and buy it. So if you're a writer and you haven't tried it, I would suggest trying it. Um, and you know see what you think i like it i really do so anyway i am to quote nathan lowell i'm at the back gate or i'm at the back door um 24 and a half minutes into this so i should stop talking now or at least stop recording uh let's see today's saturday i will be back monday and i'll be talking to you then so be seeing you